Welcome everybody, this is Waze back with another video on the channel. Today we're talking about Chrome Developer Tools. Chrome has the highest micro shape for web browser and a lot of developer really love Chrome just for their dev tools. I'm looking at this developer.chrome.com slash doc slash dev tools. This is the official Chrome dev tools documentation website. I'll walk you through some of the options that you can go and take a look at in this website. And I'll also walk you through some of the common operations that you should know as a front end developer, and they are going to help you while debugging your code in a Chrome dev tools. I work with a lot of developers and I've realized recently that not many people know the full potential of Chrome Dev Tools. Obviously, it's not possible to cover every single thing in Chrome Dev Tools in one video, but I will cover the most basics and most important options in Chrome Dev Tools, which will help you to fast track your debugging process while working on a front end or let's say a JavaScript code. Open Chrome Dev Tools by pressing command option i and this way you can open it quickly now you take a look at we have some tabs a lot of times people use their mouse to switch between them but there's a cool shortcut key that you can use which is command shift p and you can see all the panels drawers appearance and if you want to switch to any panel or trigger a command very, very quickly, you can do that by just searching for a command here and then simply pressing enter. For example, if I want to go to, let's say, source tab, I'll just press SOU, enter, and I'm in a source tab. So this is amazing, it will help you to navigate around Chrome DevTools very, very easily. Chrome DevTools offers a vast amount of keyboard shortcuts as well, which you can find by clicking on these three button here, click on that, and then go to shortcuts. And here's a list of shortcuts that you can use. Also, if you click on this list here, full list of DevTools keyboard shortcuts and gesture, click on that, it will open up a tab, and here you can see all the shortcut keys. Now we're humans, we don't really uh, remember more than 10 things at once, right? So this is a very handy page. Once you get used to with these shortcuts, it's gonna help you to you know, use that tools very, very quickly. Using mouse is okay, but sometimes it just takes too much time. Using shortcut keys will fast track your debugging process look at some of the console utilities provided by Chrome DevTools. So here in a Chrome console, we can do expressions, for example, two minus two, that will give you zero. So this is like a REPL for a JavaScript, but you can do some cool stuff here as well. For example, if I go to elements and here's the HTML for our current page, and let's just say if I click on something like this, once I click on that, you will notice something here. It says equal to equal to dollar zero. Let me zoom in a bit more. So that's the one. So what it does basically, it adds a reference to our stack with dollar zero. So if you want to access this input element now, you can do so in the console by specifying, let's say, let a equal to dollar zero enter and if i type a enter and you will see that input that we had selected is now stored in this a variable so basically you can access elements and store them into a variable right in your console that can be used for various things so also, you can do basically from last five uh, values. For example, if I click to this input type, now this has become dollar zero. So if I type here dollar zero, let me type dollar zero, enter, and now we get to see another input field. But let's just say I want to go back to the first one. So what I can do is I'll type dollar two, enter and that will give us the form dollar four that will give us the most previous one so where i'm getting this information from if you go to take a look at chrome utilities api reference and here is an information that i'm getting from so you know 
I'm just going to show you where the things are and how you can explore more because to show you everything in one video, not possible. So you can go to zero, one, two, three, and four commands work as a historical reference to the last five DOM elements inspected within the element panel or last five JavaScript heap objects selected in the profile panel. So I hope that makes sense. You can also search via X spots, dollar X and in brackets, I'll say double quotes dash dash p it's going to iterate our all the html elements in our page and bring us what is going to match with our expressions in this case we are looking for a p tag and you can see it returned 32 tags for us so if you understand xbox you should be able to understand this it is very very useful next we're going to talk about live expressions so i'm going to clear the console and let's go to console main tab and then here i'm going to click on this little eye here see this eye if you click on that it is going to give you this input field where you can start typing the expression and in this case i'm going to type document dot active element now what it's going to do it's going to evaluate this expression on every event so for example if i take my cursor to this input field i click on that you will see it will give us the active element on our html so here's an active element if i click on that it's going to take me there very very handy so if you want to quickly look at where the actual values are or live values right now we don't really have anything it's just a github website but if i go to any website where we have some data it is going to give us all the values right here so it's very very useful for debugging you can do all sort of expressions or multiple expressions for example if you want to just look for let's say dollar zero and if i click on that it is going to first of all let's click here that's dollar zero and you'll see the expression is being evaluated here so you don't have to go into the console and type dollar zero to take a look at that so if i change right it is going to update it is evaluating that expression so that's very very handy you can do live expression right here also, you can do some filtering as well. For example, if you are doing some, you know, searching text, then you can just filter out. We got this default level. Right now, we select info, warning, errors, and you can also check verbos. It will give you lots of information about what you're doing in the console. But for now, uh, we're just going to uncheck that. I'm going to give you some tips about a network tab. Right now, I've got this Angular application running. I'm going to click on this button here. It's going to make an API call. Now, a lot of times when you are debugging, you will have to go to a certain stage in your application, which might involve five, 10 or 20 steps. Once you do your 20 steps, then you will click on the particular button or you do any event in your application. Then sometimes it makes an API call. But the thing is, you don't have to follow those steps again and again. What you can do is you can right click on the API call and then you can click on this replay XHR button, which will just resend that API call and then you can start testing with the data. Okay, this is a very useful tip because once you do a certain step in your application, you make an AP call, you don't want to lose that track. You want to try to make another call because you are working on some sort of a backend code fix. Then you can just right click and then just to copy this, uh, actually replay XHR, right click on that and you will be able to do replay. Now, one more thing that you want to do is once you have that call gone out you might want to copy that so if you right click on the request go to copy and then click on this copy as curl command once i've done that then i will open uh let's say terminal and i need the terminal there so let's make it a little bit bigger here so if i paste the command you will see it is going to make the same api call with same token so if your application have some sort of a token then 
you won't lose that. So you can basically copy this curl command as long as your token is valid and you can just send this command to your backend servers because a lot of times you want to work with you know API calls, see what's the data coming in and you don't want to go and click on that specific button in your application to get that data. Another thing not many people do is just filter your API request by type. So here, if you are making a pure X, XHR request, you should click on this and that will just give you XHR request. If I click on the all, you will see there's uh, another two commands, which are not exactly the XHR. It's because it's running in the Chrome, that's why it's doing it. But if I click on it, this is the actual XHR request and I prefer to click on this and when I just want to see that. If you just want to see the API calls for the media, then it's going to load, just go to media, fonts, doc, manifest files, JavaScript files, or mostly you're going to be sticking to XHR. Also, you can filter out some commands. A lot of times when you open an application, there's a thousands of command, there's thousands of API calls goes out. So you want to filter out what you want to do by just typing here. For example, if I type, email code that you'll see that your request will be filtered and also you can just preserve the log sometimes you will go and refresh the page and all your ap calls previously will be gone so you want to make sure you check this uh preserve log also not many people do uh throttling when you're working with your mobile application for example you're working with ionic uh app app which is like a web base but you do your most coding in the Chrome browser. You can actually do it some throttling there. You want to slow down your API calls like slow 3D, fast 3D, offline, or you can do a custom profile for throttling as well. And this will simulate as a mobile network and will help you to understand if your applications still work on the you know slow network. So this is again a very, very good. Take a look at that. Performance is amazing. Once you click on this record button it is going to do your profiling reload the page and it'll give you some metrics that you can take a look at how your application performs stop and next thing i want to show you before we finish is going to be this angular so a lot of times when you are working with specific frameworks like angular react Vue or any other famous framework, they will most probably have some sort of extension. And those extensions will be really, really helpful to debug that specific code, which is built on the top of that framework. So if you are an Angular, make sure you download Angular DevTools. If you're on a React, download React DevTools, which will help you big time, will help you to you know debug your code very, very easily. A lot of times when working with your web application, you will have lots of animation. Something like this. You see this top loading bar that's like in an animating. And the way we can find out about how it's performing is going to the animation tab. By default, you might not see the animation tabs. So what you need to go click on this three dot button here and then go to more tools. And here you have all the tabs available in Comb that tool. So I'll click on animation. That will bring up this animation. And now you can see we got this animation happening, which is set to 100%. percent i want to click on 10%. And as soon as I clicked on 10%, you will notice here, now it's basically slowed down a bit and it's waiting for animation. So it is really, really great. And you basically can see how your animation is performing. And there's other things that you can do with animations here as well. I would like you to take a look at the official, official documentation for this page. Okay, so these were some of my tips while you are doing development in Chrome. I hope that helped. If it did, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.